There's this word in Greek, um, nous, it's N-O-U-S, um, which loosely translates to mind, but it doesn't mean mind um, in the the way that we see the mind now. It doesn't mean like thinking or cognition. It's like this, like this, um, this idea that the heart, they, I mean, they used to think that the, that the heart was where the intellect was. And um, so I guess it's like this idea of heart, mind. Um, and I think that is this idea of acting uh, or residing in this place of loving presence and being aware of that kind of heart space, like physically, but also like emotionally, I think. Um, and not getting, not getting so caught up in the ego, but, but yeah, this, I think this idea of the heart mind is really, really interests me. Um, and I think that's kind of, I don't know, it's a good way to kind of describe love. I don't really know. I'm Cara. Um, I am a multidisciplinary artist. I'm interested in like the kind of metaphysical, um, invisible realm, but also how that manifests in the kind of physical material world and the kind of the universal kind of laws of nature. To me, spirituality is like raising your level of consciousness um, to this like higher state. It's not specifically to me about like, well, I see, like I believe in God, but I don't believe in God in sense of like a, a man in the sky like I believe that God is life and like the the kind of life force that is behind everything <clears throat> and I would say that to me spirituality is just becoming more aware of and like understanding more like the true nature of life and of reality and becoming aware of as human beings <clears throat> we have we're, we have this, like, as we experience life and as we grow up um, and we, yeah, we, we go through life, we, um, we're conditioned and we, we take on all of this conditioning. And um, I don't know, I kind of see spirituality as, like, becoming aware of that conditioning and healing, like, the... The traumas and the experiences that we all go through because everyone experiences that to some extent. I I just like the word God. I know that that word springs up a lot of mental images um, because of the the images that we have of God obviously through like Christianity and other religions um, as this like man in the sky or this like figure um, this like deity but I don't I don't believe that God is a deity or like a kind of to me that just seems like it's a personification of this like thingy which I think is definitely helpful and I do use sometimes um because I think it can be helpful to see it like that, but I don't, I don't believe really that that is what God is. Like, I, I believe God is existence. God is just, like, simply existing in the fact that you are existing. Like, think of the millions, of the infinite amount of things right now that are working simultaneously to keep you alive right now. The fact that you're existing is the work of years of existence of ancestors of things that have got you here of just everything 
So I just like the word God because it's... I think it's quite poetic and I think like all these other words are... They're good descriptive words. But they're almost like too scientific for me and they don't have the emotion that is in it. I think energy is a good word for it. Um, consciousness definitely is essentially, yeah, and what I believe God is. Because, like, behind life is this, this, like, presence, this consciousness. I like, I like using the word God because, like, I grew up Catholic, so, um, and I, I don't know, yeah, that's kind of a thing, like, I, so I grew up Catholic and I always, I never really resonated with this idea of like a man in the sky and God always being called like the father and it's always referred to as he in the Christian faith um, and I just never really got it um, and then so I kind of turned to atheism when I was quite young and then um, yeah I just didn't really believe in anything I kind of just thought that life was like just by chance and everything was kind of just a fluke um, and then last year it sounds kind of silly but I, was, I did have this like spiritual awakening <laughs> and yeah so I, I just I that's how I kind of see God now and I yeah I do like using the word God but to me it's just like energy and just like the source of that energy and the kind of life force behind everything that's alive. I personally don't identify, like I would never call myself a Christian and I would never call myself a witch or even like a Buddhist or anything, but I really enjoy looking into each of these things because I think there is truth within all of them. And I think they are ultimately all just tools to help you experience this greater thing, which is like the divine. And they are all, yeah, they're all just tools to access that. And I think the problem is when people become too attached to the tool and they forget that it is just a tool and they start like getting superiority complexes and saying like, I'm right and you're wrong. And like what I believe is what is right. But in reality, it's, it's not, the the belief it's the, the the place where the belief gets you with like the whole spiritual thing i was learning a lot about like the ego and um there's this this book actually i was going to bring this up this um mary magdalene revealed it's like a feminist take on like christianity um yeah it's pretty cool actually basically the the kind of story behind it is they found last century maybe um this like ancient text which is the gospel of mary um and it had basically been hidden um because it was like they like sent out people to like destroy it in the fourth century but it's like basically this gospel by well not by but so the gospel so like the teachings of Jesus according to Mary Magdalene who like is commonly known as the prostitute that Jesus like that was in Jesus Jesus circle they've placed it to be written around like 80 AD um and yeah it's it's like totally revolutionary like the the kind of ideas in it are like that this peace that Christ has this like consciousness because I see like Jesus as being like one of these like enlightened beings just like the Buddha was that this love and this peace that Christ had is within everyone and you just have to like find it within yourself and there's she talks about um this so this book is like this theologian, this feminist theologian. Um, it's kind of like a memoir, um, and she 
so in the gospel they mention these seven powers and she kind of describes it as the seven powers of the ego um so there's i'm gonna get it um so the first one is darkness which is like that kind of like depression and that like hopeless feeling um second is desire or craving so it's essentially just being wanting to be somewhere where you're not um the third is ignorance but in the sense of like this forgetting that we are both like human so like this ego but we are also this like divine soul um the fourth is zeal for death or craving for death um which is basically just endangering like your health and doing things that are dangerous to your your health and your humanness i guess your human body um the fifth this is where it kind of gets a bit confusing fifth is the realm of the flesh um or enslavement to the physical body so it's basically just being like thinking that we are just this physical body um and forgetting that we are the soul as well um sixth is the foolish wisdom of the flesh or the false piece of the flesh um and i think this is like the kind of habitual nature of like the body and like you know like when you form these habits that aren't necessarily good for you but like just that's just kind of how we've evolved. Um, and then the seventh is the wisdom of the wrathful person, which is basically like anger. Um, but I really like the way that she talks about it because she's like, these are like, she sees them as this like ingredients list of being human. And like, we are supposed to feel all of these things and they are part of our nature but we just have to make sure that we don't forget that we are also like this presence of love and that that love is the kind of like soul. Yeah. Something that's really interesting about Mary's gospel is basically the kind of story in it is she, so Mary is the one who Christ resurrected to and um, and like that's the story in like the Bible. Um, but so she, yeah, so she's kind of like the, she's technically kind of like the founder of Christianity because she is the one who spread the good news of Jesus returning, resurrecting. Um, and in the gospel, she, the, the disciples, um, after so it's after Jesus' death and the disciples are kind of like frantic and they're like in the state of like terror um, because they're basically like well if the Romans can't even spare Christ who's like the son of God there's there's no hope for us and then there's like a line in it and it's like and then Mary stood up and it's just like and she like basically stands up and like embraces them all in this like presence of love and like calms them all down and is like like he's prepared us for this and um and then they're like tell us what what Christ told you and there's like a theory that Mary Magdalene was Jesus's partner and was Jesus's like lover essentially and that there was this like love between them that was like more exceptional than this love that he had for his disciples and one of the disciples in the gospel asks her and he says tell us what he taught you basically like what we we haven't learned from him um and she tells them of this vision that she has of jesus which is when he resurrected to her um and yeah so she tells them about this vision um, and one of them is basically like, I don't believe that Jesus would speak like this. 
like these ideas are too different from what we've heard. And then Peter says, how is it possible that the teacher talked in this manner with a woman about the secrets of which we ourselves are ignorant? Must we change our customs and listen to this woman? Did he really choose her and prefer her to us? So it's like, even in that, it's like, like that's what, like two centuries ago. And it's like this, still like just women aren't believed and you're, you're just not taken seriously. And, and um, yeah, it's interesting. I was listening to um, the person who wrote the Mary Magdalene Revealed book. She's doing like these lectures. Um, she was talking about how it's interesting that Jesus would choose Mary to come back to you. And I think like, I think that's really significant. And I, it's strange to me that it's been so overlooked that she was the one that he chose to resurrect to. Um, I wrote this thing in my sketchbook. I was reading this book. Anam Cara. It's like a it's a book by an Irish poet. He's he's dead now, but um about Celtic spirituality and he was talking about like having this like loving vision. Um so I wrote in my sketchbook. I was quite inspired by it. So I wrote um The loving eye transforms hurt, pain and anguish into transfiguration and renewal until it is born again. Loving vision is revolutionary. It is creative and expanding to look lovingly upon all you see. Love transcends the limiting and finite boundaries of blame and judgment. To be in love is to be eternal. And I think, like, love transcends the ego and is... It is creative to love because you're... You're... You're not like cutting off that moment with like judgment or blame and like creating this story that kind of fixes that moment and um <clears throat> which is what the ego does because that's because the the ego likes to control and the ego likes doesn't like the unknown and that's it's always seeking to find a story or an explanation for something um and I think to be in this like eternal presence that is God and a lot of spiritual people talk about being in the present moment and um, living like very moment by moment and I don't think you can do that without love because you have to be accepting of of the change um, and I think that the art can be such a good practice for empathy and for love the more that I like expand my my view of art and like the horizons of what I think art is and I don't just limit art to these like works by these famous artists or these are the things that even I'm creating um, and I can start to see everyone as an artist um you just you you just start to understand so much more and it just it totally has expanded my view of of what people can be i don't know if that really makes sense i view art as like this thing that is and well not just art but creativity in general um i think is so fundamental to humanness and being human i think that it has been such a key thing in our evolution like when monkeys first learn to hit stones together or whatever like that is creativity that's like thinking creatively, creatively. If we're going to talk about spirituality as well, I see creation as like, like the creative act is like the act of God to me. 
and like if like what I was saying before like I don't I don't see God as this like external higher being in the sky like I like I think I'm God but I don't mean that in like a narcissistic sense like I think you're God too like I think everyone has that inherent divinity within them and I think creation not just in terms of like art but creation like like there are many art forms but like just creativity that exists in the world like I don't know a seed seed sprouting is creation or like the ultimate creative act is the sexual act like I, I think that's true like and I, I just think creativity is like yeah it's like the act of God that's how I see it. I don't know like I haven't been to art school but I was I found that when I was like applying originally to art school I was like oh I don't know what course to go for because I feel like I can't really limit myself to one medium because I think like the medium is so important in how the like story of the work comes across um it's not really like I choose specifically a medium it just kind of happens <laughs> and it just it just feels right but I'm really enjoying at the moment like film and how just like the moving image and like being able to incorporate all these aspects like sound and like visual image and like writing and all that kind of stuff together um, to create like the story of whatever it is I'm trying to say. Yeah, I used to write loads when I was like really young and I used to really enjoy writing. And then I kind of stopped for like a really long time, like kind of when I got into school. And then I think last year, it was just something I kind of picked up again, but it is something that I do want to incorporate more. Um, and I have at times, like there was one of my sculptures, I kind of wrote a poem. I don't really like calling it poetry because I don't really feel like I have the, the license to call it that yet. But um, yeah, I wrote like a poem to go along with that. And I, I do want to explore that a bit more because I think it can give more depth to like works and stuff, yeah. Yeah, I definitely do do a lot of like storytelling, I think, within my work. I think I'm always trying to like, I'm very focused on like the meaning behind things a lot of the time and like symbolism and yeah, I like, I, I've noticed that in my work. It's definitely like very research heavy. Like I do, I feel like, yeah, I do a lot of research into, um, like what I could use as symbols for certain things and what I could use as metaphors for like feelings or emotions or like stories or narratives or themes. I've always been so interested in like philosophy and just understanding the world and reading about things. Um, and I do that anyway, and I have been doing that a lot more recently and just like reading a lot more books and especially with like the spiritual kind of aspect of things and just really learning loads and then that kind of feeds into my work um so it's yeah it's kind of like a natural process i trained a couple of years ago as an apprentice um with wild gore studio they're like a floral arts studio in Inverness um, and I think I think growing up in the Highlands and then doing that apprenticeship really made me just fall in love with like the beauty of nature and I think just I don't know just looking at nature you can really you can learn so much from it and I think in our society and just the world that we live in now we're so disconnected from it but like in reality we come from nature and we come from the earth and yeah I just think there's so much beauty and there's so much wisdom from 
looking at nature and looking at plants and like just the natural element. Before that experience, I never really thought of floristry as like an art form. I always just kind of thought of it as this like commercial thing. But that experience of using flowers in like such a sculptural way really opened my eyes to like what that could be as an art and I just think it's such a beautiful medium to work with and it, it feels very like humbling almost like to know that like you are at the mercy of nature almost but it's it brings so much brings everyone so much like peace and joy and like I don't think there's anyone who would you wouldn't see like a beautiful sunset and be like and not be filled with like that feeling like it, to everyone it's got this like universal power over everyone and I think that there's something in that that's almost like inexplainable. Kaliak Collective was something that I wanted to do because I really believe in bringing back like this focus on creativity and like how healing that can be and like the sense of creating a community and sharing creatively and helping everyone find their own voice and figuring out the world and who they are I think is just really important to me yeah when we were like putting together the collective, I was writing up the manifesto and then I got a bit carried away and started like writing this like poem thing, um, which we published, like we um, posted on the Instagram, like one of our first posts is, is like the kind of first like draft almost of that monologue. Um, and then I had thought about doing a film of it for like, when we first kind of launched um, and I thought about doing it for a while and I hadn't really got to it and then Circus asked us to be part of the exhibition and we originally were gonna like try and put a call out and see if like other people wanted to join but it was just like that exhibition was like two weeks or something to put it together so I was like I'll just do the film like and that can be like us being like this is who we are and this is what we're about so yeah it was it was literally the manifesto actually so like, with that exhibition I did definitely want that like cozy homey vibe because I was thinking about like the idea of like community and like home and like that's what I wanted it to be like and I did that little mat that said welcome home on it um, but yeah, there was, when I did my foundation in Manchester, um, I did, we did an exhibition at the end and my final kind of piece for it was this like installation, this like hanging installation. And originally I wanted it to be in like a really dark room and have like these like lights on it. Um, but I couldn't do that because of just like the limitations of the space and stuff. Um, but I painted my wall space like dark blue and I really yeah I think I really like to consider the space of the artwork because I think that gives it another element I like things to be very like immersing I don't know if that's a word um and to like really just like be able to immerse yourself it's another way to like connect with your audience I think and yeah to be able to make it more accessible I really ultimately want my work to be like a source of connection between me and the audience and the audience with itself I guess um, and I think that like the space itself is like such a valuable tool in that I was thinking the other day as well that like 
I really believe that like creativity is this collaborative experience of understanding and of empathy and like you can't have you can't have individual creativity almost like you have to have it as a collaboration and I think I don't know you you need the connection everything is in, interconnected and I genuinely believe that and um, I think that's quite like a Celtic or a pagan belief that like everything is interconnected I think you see that a lot in Celtic art um, of like the weaving but one of the most like amazing parts of doing the collective is that I've I've just been so like taken back by just the creativity that is out there and and I also I want to say quickly um I just want to like thank and kind of take a moment to appreciate um Maddie, Katie and Rosanna for like everything that they've done and ev- like all the work that they've put in because I like the the collective genuinely wouldn't be what it is without them and it is honestly like it's such an honor and privilege to work with them because we're all just so focused on the vision and we're all so caring towards each other and we don't like if someone's not feeling great or just doesn't have time like we're all completely understanding and everyone just does what they can and I'm just I'm so proud of us and I'm so grateful to them for everything that they've done because none of us have been paid at all for it actually um we've done it all um like out of our own time our own resources and I just genuinely like can't thank them enough and I'm really excited to see where it goes and I'm really um yeah just really grateful for them so thank you gals um (laughs) I think like ultimately we just want to create a community because like especially up here I think all of us and there's I think pretty much every creative person up here will agree that like there is not much and it's so hard especially when you're young and you're like still in school and before you get to go off to go to art school and meet all these amazing creative people that um you connect with so well it can feel very like isolating and lonely to be like the only person in your friend group or the only person like I think I was one of two people in my year that applied to art school um and it's just so hard to like find contemporary stuff so I think what we really want to do is just increase access to that so and to like show people that I think the thing with the creative pathways as well was like I I'm not in art school I don't know if I will go to art school especially with Covid and stuff I just was like I'm not doing that that's just a mess like (laughs) I'm not (laughs) putting myself through that and like and I think all of us the four of us have had such unique journeys um, to art school or not to art school. I mean, like me and Maddie aren't that. Me and Maddie aren't in art school. So like that's two out of the four of us. And I just think it's important to raise awareness of like the, the, like there's, there's no certain path to go down to be a creative. Um, yeah and like that's just kind of what we wanted to do with the creative pathways and also we did this post recently about life after rejection which is like one of my favorite posts that we've done because 
that definitely resonates with me like so well it took me like three years to get into a degree which I ended up not going to um and just like when I first initially got rejected from art school I was so devastated and I was so like oh my god I'm such a failure and like and it was just so shit but and I think like seeing something like that at that time would have really, really helped. And I've learned so much from those rejections and they've gotten me to a place that I couldn't have even imagined ever being. Where I was gonna say, where I want my practice to go from now on, um, the kind of direction I'm going in is I'm starting to realize more and more that like, I was thinking like I'm so influenced by spirituality now because it has become such a massive part of my life um, and it has just taken over my art but it's almost like flipping to like my art practice is becoming my spiritual practice um, in terms of like it's it's a way for me to to heal my own, my own experiences and my own ego and personality and kind of all that stuff. Yeah, I want to kind of look into that a bit more. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, yeah, and also just like, like I was saying before about like, you asked if I, you asked about me kind of my art's like very self-reflective and I think it is but like I said like I think it's because I know my own experience so well and I feel like I feel like I can't really talk about other experiences because I don't like I just don't feel like it's my place not that there's anything I don't know wrong with that but I just for me I just know my own experience so well and that's like where my work is like I have to work on myself to to I don't know make the world a better place cringe but um but yeah I'm gonna stop rambling <laughs>